good evening everyone this is rajendran here from market calls and uh, welcome everyone to webinar on how to track buyers and sellers using order flow right so uh, this is a part of the preview webinar for uh, our upcoming mentorship program uh, trades law 3.0 where we do a complete one month mentorship program on market profile and order flow so before getting into the session just give me the quick confirmation about the audio and video quality so that we can kick start with the session this audio and video quality is fine there is a chat box out there where you can go and uh, type your uh, comments and your questions and also uh, Oh, all right thank you so before getting into session uh, i just want to know uh, what, what is your trading experience like uh, how many uh, years or how many months you've been trading in this markets you can type it out over there all right so it's six months three years five years so pretty much mixed experience i guess great thank you i mean oh my god uh, today's session is pretty much crowded i guess you guys also uh, been in the lockdown i mean one of the good time to uh, learn some do some serious learnings right i mean uh, learning uh, uh, this entire uh, lockdown period like i, I put myself into a, a learning uh, mode and uh, a lot of serious learning is happening from my side as well hope such kind of uh, serious learning is happening from your side as well once in a while opportunity to learn things which are uh, serious um, especially if you're a trader and uh, especially if you're an investor right so uh, let's quickly kick start uh, the session without any further delay so my name is uh, rajendran i've been the uh, founder of market calls i've been writing in market calls and uh, since 2007 onwards i've been writing about various uh, topics about uh, markets the strategies trading softwares algos right market profile and order flow lot many things i've been writing about it i've been a full time trader as well and uh, recently i have i'm just uh, handling the co-founder of webinars uh, so webinars is a kind of an online uh, trading community where uh, we build a professional trading community right so a uh, little bit about me i mean i've been uh, trading market since 2007 onwards 2006 7 onwards and uh, right now i'm a uh, full time uh, trader mostly in equity derivative markets mostly i used to trade short term and very short term trading strategies most likely intraday and uh, a bit of a carry forwarding stuff is what i prefer uh, doing it and uh, i've been an algo system developer as well but these days most of my uh, core focus is on discretionary trading using market profile and uh, order flow kind of concepts i've been trained uh, uh, i mean i had trained more than 1000 plus uh, full time and part time traders and in today's session we are going to discuss exclusively about a very interesting topic one of my favorite topic as well so in today's session we are going to discuss about order flow now how many of you are very new to order flow you can just type out in the chat box so that i can get a fair idea all right lot many people great so what we are going to see in today's session is that how order flow is different from candlestick based studies or other uh, charts and how it is good in identifying the uh, support and resistance and momentum right so we are going to look particularly in today's topic how order flow helps traders in identifying what kind of buyers what kind of sellers especially where the momentum buyers where the momentum sellers are going to uh, happen so uh, how exactly we can do that all i can say you about the order flow is that it is kind of a microscopic study it is like just like looking into the candlesticks so talking about order flow it's a tool to visualize what the buyers and sellers are doing inside the uh, markets so it is a uh, in one another way we can uh, say like how the buyers and sellers are interacting in a given candle let's say that if i watch a candle what i'll come to know that if i watch a candlesticks or if i watch a uh, total buyers and sellers volume right so if, if just think about a, a game here i i'm having a 5 minute charts of nifty let's say i'm trying to pull out the volume charts i'll, I'll try to pull up volume charts over here maybe let me, let me add some color to it as well so how do we, how do we know that uh, who is doing what so here we are having a big candle and uh, we are seeing a big volume as well so what does that means so how do i know that how many buyers and sellers are inside that candle the chart what i am showing you is a nifty future 
five minute charts on last friday's activity last friday price opened down and uh, it went sideways for quite some time it does some pullback activity you see that it, it does some pullback activity it, it does kind of an uh, all of a sudden there was a surprise move of uh, 60 70 points and then price started coming down now how i can extract meaningful information when i am looking into a bar charts or i'm looking into the volume rather than looking into the candlestick charts if i am going to look into the order flow charts now how i am able to extract any meaningful information so that i'll be able to manage some amount of uh, uh, meaningful uh, information if i am able to get at least uh, that valid information where the supports are where the resistance are where big buyers are coming in now that is what the major problem the order flow solves what the order flow shows is that the same five minute chart let me show you in the order flow perspective so this is the same five minute charts i've been using uh, uh, for uh, today's session i've been using ninja trader 8 platform on top of that i'm using bell tpo.com order flow indicator the indicator what i'm using is bell order flow pro.com uh, pro and uh, the, it's the latest version which i'm using so let me go to the last friday's activity right so let, last friday's activity you can see that what you can see from the order flow charts is you can see the same candlestick what i'm showing you is the same candlestick but it gives you bifurcation of the buyers and sellers right so what happened on last friday so last friday we opened with a uh, gap and for the people who are very very new to the order flow so this is kind of a uh, laddering style this is a five minute chart what i'm using is a five minute uh, charts so you can see the time uh, five minute charts over here so inside the candlestick you'll be able to see the buyers and sellers on both the sides you'll be able to see the uh, buyers on the left hand side buyers and sellers on the right hand side so buyers on the left hand side and sellers on the right hand side so how we can get the buyers and sellers data so you might wonder about it anytime you wonder about that how we can get the buyers and sellers data any idea how uh, the order flow gets the buyers and sellers data because most of the candlestick studies we cannot get the buyers and sellers data whereas here at, at each and every price level you can see that there is a 222 lots got punched at this level so this is 222 lots all right so some buyers came and punched at these level whereas the sellers you can see there are multiple 303 lots over here 228 lots over here now on top of that i am able to get a bifurcation of buyers and sellers for example in the table i can add how many buyers and how many sellers at the, at the bottom of the table at the bottom there is a table out there so i can see that I can add the total number of volumes. If I bring the volumes, the volume figure is nothing but what? So the total volume is the very first five minute candle, almost 14,360 contracts got traded, right? Contracts. So all are mentioned in contracts. So maybe if you want in a number of shares, you have to multiply by the lot size, lot size of Nifty is 75. So out of this, how many of them are buyers? The total number of buyers are 7,800 and I'm sorry, that's uh, the buyers are total number of buyers are 6543. 6543 and the sellers, the sellers are roughly around 7817. 7817. So if you sum up both, if you add both, you will be able to get this 1,460 contracts. Whereas if you are watching from the candlestick charts, so of course, uh, let me go to the candlestick charts as well. But for the price based charts, I'm going to use AMI broker. So let's say, let me open AMI broker charts. So in the AMI broker charts, I'm seeing a volume here. So the first bar volume is something like it is in uh, millions. So what I'm going to do here is that I, I, this is a number of shares. I want to convert into the lot size. So I'm going to open the formula. I'm going to divide by 75 slash 75 divided by 75. So then I'll be getting the volumes in uh, numbers. So here I'll be able to max to max. I'll be able to get the volumes and numbers. You can see that the numbers are 14,373, uh, uh, something like that. So what helps the traders here is that 
the order flow helps traders to bifurcate the buyers and sellers activity right so that's what it, it gives the buyers and sellers data and of course it uses tick level charts it uses a lot of uh, uh, tick level data these days modern data vendors right so they support tick level data but, but back in 2007 or 8 or 9 very few vendors they support uh, tick level data but right now almost all the vendors they support tick level database so in order to work with order flow you need tick level charts tick data tick data you need the tick data to which provides every tick at least for in our exchange most of our indian exchanges they provide they don't provide actual tick data they provide something called one second one second snapshot tick data tick data so that's a kind of a consolidated tick data is what our indian exchanges provides and here using that tick data we can build how many buyers and how many sellers at each and every price level and as the ticks is coming in each and every tick shows how many buying quantity how many selling quantity is there for that particular trade each and every trade will be recorded and each and every trade contains how many buyers and how many sellers that is how that data has been used on top of that the charts has been drawn the chart has been plotted so it is more of a visualization of probably a candlestick but moreover it's one way what one step ahead of looking into the candlestick looking inside the candlestick kind of a microscopic view inside the candlestick and looking into how many buyers and how many sellers are there at each and every price level not only the total volume so it, it doesn't if, if you see the uh, order flow charts here right so it, it doesn't not only shows how many volumes are got traded it shows a lot many things so what are the components of those order flow let me give a basic primer over here if you watch any order flow charts just give me a second if you watch any order flow charts you will be able to see the not only the buyers and sellers bifurcation but also various things oops something issue with my mouse let's just give me a second i'm just connecting my mouse some issue with my mouse pad all right so there we go so this is april i'm, I'm going to the last friday's activity so last friday's activity over here so if you see the last Friday's activity, right? So it, it shows the each and every candles, buyers and sellers activity. That's what we can learn about that. And there are a lot of modes over here. So it's a BIDAS mode and uh, BIDAS histogram mode, BIDAS imbalance mode, delta mode, right? So what I prefer to use is most of the time, I prefer to use BIDAS imbalance mode because BIDAS imbalance mode is the one which helps me to identify where the momentum is happening, where the momentum exhaustion is happening. A trader can easily understand those things. Now, if you see the last Friday's activity, last Friday activity, what is happening out there? You can see when the price door starts, what you can see here is that a lot of sellers are coming and pushing it down. On the, on the selling side, you can see a lot of sellers are coming and pushing it down. And the red color bars, the red color bars, you can see that all the places, the red color bars are not highlighted. Only at few locations, you will be able to see those red color bars. Now, what are those red color bars? The red color bars are nothing but when I'm using an order flow, I try to compare diagonally. So most likely I'll be comparing uh, diagonally, something like I'll be trying to compare something like this. I, I prefer to compare in a diagonal fashion, right? So if the diagonal volume is more than 10x, right? If, if the diagonal volume is more than 10x, I'm comparing the seller's volume with the buyer's volume like this diagonally so when i'm comparing this if the volume is more than 10 times for example you can see you can compare the zero with the 124 so more than uh, a, a pretty decent volume is there right and and same cases think about over here 97 and 5 it's almost more than 10 times so if more than 10 times of volume if that kind of volume is there then we will be able to see the momentum 
so we will we can able to see the momentum that, that those red color stripes are nothing but the momentum colors so that's nothing but the sellers momentum sellers momentum and the green color bars are nothing but the buyers momentum buyers momentum now what happened on last friday is that you can see a lot of zeros are coming in what do you think those zeros are what do you think those zeros are you can just type it out what do you think those zeros are a lot of zeros are there right so what do you think those zeros are of course no buyers no trades are happening so those zeros represents what those zeros represents no trades are not happening that means nobody is putting any limit orders over there no trades are happening no trades so that is even though your candlestick is looking like this like so the candle is not the price is not continuously going down the price is not sliding down continuously price is going down and then it's going down it's going down like this it's keeping many prices over there so a lot of prices are getting skipped down. so the, the chart itself not continuous you can see here the chart itself not continuous it instead of keep on going down like this this is a continuously price is going down but this is not happening what is happening in that market is that when the market opened on last friday price was going down like this so trade was happening at very few locations and that is why you are seeing the zeros the zeros are like as good as the gaps in between the five minute candle so there are no trading activities happening no trading activities happening because nobody is willing to supply liquidity no supply so we can we can say like no supply is there no supply or in other terms we can call it as a in, in terms of jargon we can call it as no liquidity over there no liquidity so since there is no supply no liquidity no trade is happening at those levels no trade is happening at those levels so morning what the what is happening over here the buyers are clearly pushing it down i mean i'm sorry the sellers are clearly pushing it down in the morning the sellers are the one who is pushing it down you can see when the sellers are pushing it down only sellers are present in this market they are the one who is coming and punching 100 lots over here 100 lots and then 23 lots 92 lots 98 lots 83 lots and 124 lots 111 lots 44 lots 106 lots so only sellers are pushing it down buyers are present but they are not much so very few places buyers have been present but totally the entire activity has been controlled by the sellers this is a very important and very critical information because when the sellers are pushing like this continuously they are pushing like this right without any interruption that is why i'm able to see that whenever there is a continuous pushing is there from the sellers at multiple locations right so that those locations act like a strong resistance so that this is one of the strong resistance zones of course there are no in between there are a lot of zeros are there you can see that however when these kind of zones are present in the market it brings a potential resistance so i can draw a rectangle like you can say like this is kind of a smart money behavior so most likely it's more of an institutional behavior and i can use this to uh, probably to plot and uh, pretty interesting uh, resistance level so let me plot a uh, resistance just give me a second That particular day it offers a very interesting reference so so, the, so this is the place continuously sellers are pushing it down only sellers are present in these markets and uh, multiple uh, sellers has been coming and pushing the markets around the open so one of the we, we call them like a kind of a stacked sellers so later on i'll give a brief introduction about what is the stacked seller is all about but that particular day it offers a very interesting opportunity over there so what you can understand from this structure is that so this structure gives that sellers are only sellers are coming and pushing the markets down they are most likely smart sellers if they are really smart sellers when the price is entering into this band what you'll be seeing is a rejection you'll be you'll be expecting more and more sellers coming when the price is again trying to re-enter this band so that's what it happened around 955 you can see that 955 price was 
again trying to enter into this band right so watch out the band the band is like uh, 8220 to 8280 so that's what the band i'm able to see over here i can draw the same band in uh, ami broker as well so 8220 to 8280 so let me pull up and watch let me draw the band here as well i want to draw a similar band from 8280 to 8220 this is a band so price was trying to re-enter into this band right so whenever the price is entering into this band as i said it will act like a potential resistance it was rejecting again during middle of the day one more time the price was trying to re-enter this band again a rejection so those are a beautiful trade setup with a very tight stop loss of course these kind of high volatile markets this kind of stop loss is pretty bigger but those are very interesting trade locations when the price is coming into the band and it is getting rejected so usually that becomes a potential trading opportunity right so price is entering into the band and then it is getting sold off from there it contributes that it's an indication that that's a potential resistance zone potential resistance zone so what happens here is that the smart money who sold the smart money especially the institutional money the smart money who sold over there who are consecutively selling over there they are the one who is coming and doing some sort of an activity called we call that activity as an absorption so they do an absorption and at times they push the price aggressively down so they, they manage to um, see this reference level as a re-entry point that they, they try to re-enter again they re-enter in, in fact they re-enter passively they haven't re-entered once but that particular day they re-entered twice on that particular day so let me show you uh, even uh, around uh, one o'clock right so i can extend this by double clicking and i can change the timings to something like 17 so that i'll be able to extend that uh, rectangle so now that becomes like a zone so again you can see that around middle of the day also the similar buyers are trying to enter into this band so buyers are pushing it really hard in fact uh, you can see big buyers are coming and pushing it so despite the big buying activity this candle there was a huge spike in the candle around uh, 140 so 140 is the candle you can see the amount of buyers which are coming in so almost uh, 100 119,369 lots 481 or 51 lots so a lot of big buyers are coming a lot of momentum buyers are coming in but they are not consecutive momentum these, these are mostly uh, momentum but they are not stacked momentum so what i'm going to teach you is today about what is a stacked momentum how to visualize those stacked momentum right so by looking into that you can identify strong resistance levels strong support levels right so think about that again price was entering into this band again who what is happening sellers are pushing it hard sellers are pushing it hard. now really some again one more big sellers are coming and pushing it really hard on the downside so that zone is what we called as a kind of an uh, we can call as a smart money positioning zone so this zone we called as a smart money positioning that positioning happening at the opening of the candle itself right so if you are looking into the candlestick studies or indicator based studies indicator based studies doesn't show an exact visualization of where the supports are forming during the live markets whereas auto flow is a tool which talks about what is happening right now in the markets so right now what the sellers are trying to do so i'm able to find that the sellers are coming up with in a, in a smarter way like these are not the smart money for the next five years so something like rakesh jinjunwala is a smart money in the long term not necessarily rakesh jinjunwala has to be a smart money from an intraday perspective do you agree or not rakesh jinjunwala is a probably a uh, investor so he is come from the investing community right so most likely yeah maybe he could be uh, doing some trades as well but not necessarily Rakesh Jinjanwala has to be intelligent from an intraday perspective because Rakesh Jinjanwala not necessarily has to be an intraday trader. He is smart money, but not necessarily whenever he is buying S Bank, let's say he recently bought S Bank, right? Not necessarily he has to be an uh, 
uh, smart from the day one itself right when he is buying sba maybe he might be smart he might be intelligent over a period of time over a, a one year period or a two year period or three year period but what i am talking about here is i'm talking about a smart money from an intraday perspective how i can identify a smart money from the intraday perspective there are a lot many funds are there right a lot many funds like uh, jp morgan they run their own funds goldman sachs they run their own funds lic mutual fund they run their own funds how do i know that the fund is smart from an intraday perspective they are not right they are mostly from the investing community yes there are some investors i mean there are some traders who have a very strong knowledge about the price action who can who have the capability to stop the price from an intraday perspective now those are the guys we need to bother about it those are the guys who are really smart from the intraday perspective and of course out of flow is one of the fantastic tool to do scalping especially with a very very tight stop loss even in this kind of high volatile markets and of course the the trade which was offered on last friday is not an tighter stop loss it was something it was an a uh, bit uh, difficult stop loss to manage because something the stop loss was around uh, something like uh, 40 50 points right so that that's a kind of stop loss but the market volatility is even much bigger the volatility in the markets was much bigger and i would say that this is one of the zone where when the price again enters into the zone and it is trying to reject and you are seeing a lot of absorption activity and that is one of the good place to look for an reentry to join the smart money if the smart money is there definitely they will be rejecting such kind of bands these bands right now uh, it was like 60 70 points but back in those days right so you will be able to get those kind of bands within uh, 10 points or 15 points at times even 8 points kind of stop loss you can manage so high volatility higher the volatility of course the bigger the stop loss and uh, when the volatility in the market is cooling down right you will be able to see that the, the stop loss also comes down drastically there are times you will be able to figure out with a four point or five point kind of stop loss which is very much possible in a low volatile environment right of course last uh, uh, last couple of weeks we been experiencing higher volatility but luckily the volatility is slowing down fear is there among the people but the amount of fear is slowing down because people are getting used to the fear right so that's what i can say that people are getting used to the fear even I, every day i wake up uh, in the past i'll be getting surprised by the numbers day by day now the numbers are like uh, what are the numbers today corona virus infection numbers it had crossed a million now i don't see a difference between a million and 1.1 million 1 million and 1.1 million i don't see much of a difference over there yes there is a panic is there there is a fear is there among the traders among the investors among the mostly most likely the investing community is having a fear but that fear has been substantially came down in this markets right so once the fear is coming down once the fear started coming down of course the market volatility range the bigger fluctuation in the markets also comes down every day we been seeing 300 400 points or 500 600 points of kind of fluctuation <laughs> that kind of fluctuation i had seen i think long way back during october 2000 eight in terms of percentage terms i had seen during october and november 2008 is what i had seen like every day the price moves crazily 3 4 percentage 5 percentage 8 percentage that kind of uh, gymnastics market had done during 2008 uh, i mean october 2008 and uh, november 2008 and later on after uh, almost 12 years now almost 12 years this is the first time i've been uh, seeing that i guess april month is also most likely with this kind of volatility but uh, i believe slowly steadily we will the volatility in the markets will be slowing down because volatility is more of a cycle right so we are in a high volatile phase but yes even in this high volatile phase the order flow provides meaningful information all right so let's come back to the topic here we we are discussing about uh, the basics of order flow right so what we had seen is that uh, here we had seen the Uh, table of buyers and sellers you can control the this chart what you are watching is a 5 minute chart this is right hand side is a buyers this when i say buyers they are nothing but the buyers who are placing market orders market orders right and the sellers who are punching market orders sell market orders 
So if you are punching market orders, then uh, definitely you are the one who is moving the markets. If you are moving the markets, then most likely you will be able to see yourself in the order flow. Right? So maybe you, you can uh, go back and try punching some 100 lots and make sure that you are getting that 100 lots getting punched in the order flow as well. So you'll be able to see yourself as a buyer in the order flow. Of course, something like in Nifty, it's very difficult. Probably something like some illiquid instruments where the volume activity is very, very low. There you can, once you send the market orders, right? You'll be able to see yourself. But yes, you can see in the order book as well. There's something called order book. So what do you think order book shows? In the order book, probably you might be able to see the order book in your broker terminal, the top five bid and ask level top five bid and ask level. It shows the buyers and sellers, right? What, what, what is that buyers? Any, any idea what is that buyers? You can just type it out. What do you think, who are, who are those buyers? So it has a table which shows like, uh, uh, it, it shows the in the reverse direction. Probably it shows the buyers on the uh, left-hand side and uh, uh, sellers on the right-hand side, right? So sellers on the right-hand side. It shows some quantity like 100 quantity at uh, so and so prices, buyer buying quantity and uh, selling price. It'd be showing, right? The top five buyers and sellers. What are those things? Of course, they are limit orders. They are, they are what? They are most likely they are limit orders. Whatever is shown in the order book, they are just simply limit orders. Limit orders, let me be very frank, it shows only the it shows only the, we can say like, the limit orders, they don't move the markets. If you put a limit order, do you think you're moving the markets? You're not. The only one who is punching the market orders, they move the markets. If you're putting a buy market order, you're going to move the markets up. If you're going to put the sell market orders, you're going to move the market down, right? So yes, of course, limit orders can control the velocity of the price. How faster a price can move, the limit order can decide, but which direction the price has to move, whether upside or downside, right? So it is mostly decided by the market orders. And that market orders is visualized using the order flow kind of tools. So now getting back into the charts over here. So there is a very interesting setup over here. So there is a, a concept called Delta. So the Delta is nothing but, Delta is nothing but, Delta is nothing but total number of buyers. I, I'm going to sum up all these buyers and some, I'm going to sum up all these sellers. So sum up all the buyers. So total buyers minus total sellers. Total sellers is what I'll be getting the difference between the buyers and sellers. In, in fact, Delta is nothing but a basic difference between the buyers minus sellers is what the Delta. So. If I'm getting the delta value positive, that means uh, overall in this candle, buyers are controlling this candle. Whereas if the delta is getting negative, so you can see that delta is getting negative in most of these candles. So that means the this particular candle has more number of sellers compared to the buyers. You can see the delta over here. There is a delta candle also. There is a delta value is also shown over here. That shows that this throughout the uh, entire activity the sellers have been continually they are defending those markets and of course uh, uh, apart from that there are a lot of metrics over here it shows the commitment of trades cot levels cot buyers and cot sellers and uh, cr contract reversals for the buying side and also selling side so that metric will show how much pressure the buyers and selling sellers are putting at each and every candle level now on top of that there is an uh, uh, volume profile as well. This is a kind of a volume profile. So we call this as an absolute volume profile. Absolute volume profile. At each and every price level, at each and every price level, how many volumes are happening? For example, at this price level, if I draw a line, how many buyers and how many sellers are present? I'm gonna add everything and if I, if I sum up everything, I'll be ending up with this number 2004 for that day, for that entire day, at that price level, how many traders are present? How many volume transaction happened? And out of that, out of this 2004, how many of them are buyers and how many of them are sellers is shown in a histogram format. Histogram format. 
All right. So, but now how I can really identify the momentum in this? So it's e very easy to identify the momentum because, uh, as I said, uh, we try to compare the order flow charge diagonally, right? So I try to compare the charge diagonally. So why we compare the charge diagonally? Because if you see the price, we have two different price at any given time. The buyers and sellers, they don't buy, they don't present at the equal levels. There will be a bid price and there'll be a sell price, I mean, ask price. Both will not be at the same level. If the, if the buyers are at uh, 99, the sellers will be at 100, right? Or if the buyers are at 99.5, the sellers will be 100.5. Always both these levels will never match. So we, we have to, when I, come, when I have to compare the buyers with sellers, I have to compare diagonally. So if I try to compare diagonally over here, I'll be able to see that these are the places where the volume is more than 10x. So here, these are the places 10x volume I'm able to see, 10x volumes over here, where the buyers are 10x more than the sellers. And of course, zero is also, uh, you can argue that zero multiplied by 100 is zero, right? So it's not that way. So even if the volume is one over here, so here it is 42, right? So the volumes are pretty high compared to the volumes on the sell side. So that is why here you can see a stack of activities happening. So you can see that each and every block, which I represented here in Nifty is just two points. So two points, every two point block, every two point block in Nifty, the block is getting plotted, the brick is getting plotted. And every two points, once I'm, I'm seeing a continuous green blocks, three continuous green blocks three continuous green blocks. So now what does that mean? That, that is the place where the buyers are putting more effort than the sellers. And that is an interesting, important information. The same thing goes with the sellers also. If you see the sellers, sellers we try to compare diagonally again, right? So you can see these are the places where four times of stack is presented. Four continuous blocks, continuous block of sellers, block of sellers. Now other places, wherever it is white, right? If I try to compare, you don't find that uh, 10X, 10X kind of volume, you don't find it over there. And this is a serious information. This, this helps the traders to identify a potential support and a potential resistance. So let, let me give you an, uh, a little bit brief about how you should identify stack the momentum. It's a very uh, interesting setup. Usually you can use it to identify some smart money over there, smart money or smart institutional money. So when a smart money is present in the markets, right? so they will be coming as something like Nifty, something like Nifty, let me show you. When the five minute bars are coming in, so let me add, let me put some, let me give some simple example. So let's say the this is buying side in the order flow and this is sell side, right? So whereas if you are use if you are seeing in the order book, right? Order book you'll be seeing the different scenario. Order book will be having a buyers on the left hand side and sellers on the right hand side. But you know in a, in order flow in order flow it's completely different. So buyers let's say that buyers are trying to. Uh, uh, control this uh, block and buyers are coming here like 100, whereas sellers are only 10. So this is more than 10X. So this will be in a shaded color. This will be, uh, let me highlight this with some green color. And, and similarly, let's say 20, oops. twenty and 200, and let's say um, 50 and 500. And let's say 10 and 20, let's say five and zero. So if I try to compare diagonally, I'll be able to see three blocks over here. There are these three blocks, which are at least 10X, 10X the seller's volume. Those 10X, the seller's volume is what? We need to have at least three consecutive blocks. In that case, we can uh, use this as a kind of an uh, something like, Let's say we can, we can use this block as an, we can consider this block as an uh, momentum uh, here. So let's say 
Oof, my clothing is pretty bad, so bear with me. So we can consider this block as a kind of a momentum bias. So we can also identify momentum bias if there are any stuffed zeros over there. So now think about a similar example. Let's say I want to take an example. Let's say the buyers are present over here, 10 and uh, 100. Whereas let's say uh, something like uh, 0 and 0 and 0. And let's say 20 and 100 again, and 200 here. And let's say 5 and uh, uh, 50 and 5 and 4 and 2 and 3. So in this case, if I try to compare, right, the 10 and uh, 100 it will be an uh, buyers 10x this is 10x so here is 0 to 0 if we, if we try to compare right nothing much will happen so that is a zero is out there and if you compare this this is 10x at least uh, uh, more than 10 times of volume and uh, 20 and 200 again 10x and this is also 10x compare this so however there is a stuffed zero is there this is what we call as what stuffed zero stuffed zero is inside here so that means lack of liquidity is over there. Otherwise, if you remove that zero, it is more of a continuous, this is more of a continuous uh, a zone, right? So other than this uh, zero, if you ignore the zero, this is still a stacked momentum. So a stacked momentum here. So I can, I can consider this as a stacked buyer. This is a stacked buyer. Stacked buyer. The same case, I can also consider this block as an, Minimum, we need to have at least three consecutive blocks with at least maybe the settings, it, it's as per your uh, order flow settings. In my case, I had set as a 10x. This is more of a software settings. The 10x, the 10x is nothing but the 10x multiple, which I'm looking is more of a software setting. Software setting. Right. And uh, the stop to zero, other than stop to zero, it is still a stacked buyer momentum. It's a stacked buyer momentum and with this stack buyer momentum we can say like this entire zone this entire zone will be acting like a potential support zone that means what when the price keeps on moving away from that and when the price is entering into this zone and it is rejecting this zone it's a good trading opportunity to look for a long opportunity mostly kind of a scalping opportunity look for some 20 points 30 points 40 points kind of gain is what one can use this kind of tools to look for intraday scalping setups, especially if you want to understand where the buyers are actually coming and playing over there, you can go and take your trading decisions very confidently at those levels, right? And because you know that what the buyers are doing at those locations and when the price is coming and rejecting over there, how the buyers are again coming and driving there, you can watch some uh, serious repeatable trading patterns over there time to time again and again. And that is why auto flow is one of the popular study and yes the study has been invented after 2001 and much more sophisticated software started coming from 2008 onwards and of course for indian markets auto flow is getting more and more popular after 2012 onwards because and especially after 2015 16 onwards most of the data vendors right so most of the data vendors they started supporting tick level data most of the local vendors right now they started supporting data because they started seeing that out of flow is a new tool probably it requires tick level data so they started providing tick level information and that is where uh, so most of the traders in indian market they are right uh, they are uh, very much new to out of flow and uh, yes it, it's an one of the innovative study and very few books has been written of course there are not much of a books it's more of an uh, self expertized uh, uh, observations over there and I've been observing order flow charts since 2012 onwards. Initially, I used Market Delta, and uh, it, it is kind of a costlier software. Close to close, you need to spend some 400 plus dollars every month for the tool plus the data. Back in those times, you have to rely on uh, eSignal. Now, I used to, since the local data vendors, they came, I prefer using uh, global data feeds as a data feed. And uh, along with that, I, I use Bell TPO as a tool as a, for, an, for my auto flow studies. 
So primarily I used to watch Nifty, Bank Nifty and a couple of stocks. Not much into stocks, but I'm more into trading uh, Nifty futures and Bank Nifty futures. So most of the time my screen, you'll be able to find the Nifty futures and Bank Nifty futures running all the time. Right? So that is what an uh, stacked or uh, stack the buyers and stack the sellers is all about the stack the sellers you'll be able to see similar uh, block over here so even if the block is coming something like this think about that so what happened on last friday is that we are seeing such kind of red blocks we are seeing red blocks again zero again a red block again a zero couple of zeros again a red block right again a zero that is what we are seeing it so if you ignore the zeros if you ignore those stuff the zeros stuff for the zero liquidity zones those we call it as a zero liquidity zones those zeros what we call those zeros over here we call this as a zero liquidity zones so where no traders has been present over there of course there are a lot of zeros over here so we call this as a zero liquidity zones however let me go back to the last uh, friday's chart and let me show you again how it becomes a smart money, right? So how I am exactly saying that it's a smart money. Now see the behavior over here, 103 followed by zero and 23 followed by two zeros. Again, 92 in red color followed by zeros, 58 followed by multiple zeros. Again, 83 followed by multiple zeros, 124 followed by multiple zeros, 111 followed by multiple zeros. If you ignore all these zeros, you will be seeing a stack, a pile of red color stack where only the sellers are seriously coming and pushing those uh, pushing the price now this is what we call as a serious seller serious sellers maybe we can call them as a smart sellers and they are smart from an intraday perspective all right so they they're not necessarily has to be smart from an uh, uh, weekly perspective or a monthly perspective or a positional perspective but they are really smart from an intraday perspective we can clearly identify the resistance zones and when the price comes back and uh, rejects those levels you can easily go back and uh, um, take some uh, trading opportunity over there it's those are the place when the price is coming and rejecting over here you can look for some quick trades probably something like in 30 40 points with this kind of high volatility you can even go with 50 points also uh, but when the volatility cools down you also control you also learn to control your expectations in the markets in a low volatile markets typically the expectation among the traders is something like uh, 15, 20 points, right? 15, 20 points in Nifty. If you are trading in Bank Nifty, maybe the expectation will be around something like 40 to 60 points in Bank Nifty, right? With this kind of volatility, if the similar setups are there in Bank Nifty, it could be something like 100, 120 points is this the expectation over here. Because casually and 50, 60 points are happening in uh, uh, Nifty and casually 100, 200 points are happening in Bank Nifty with this volatility but this is very rare we don't see we are not likely to see this the same kind of volatility in the future as well maybe uh, in the march we had seen in a worst case we will be seeing in the april also but i don't think the same kind of volatility will be repeating in upcoming days as well all right so where we are so that's a zero volume I, I would like to talk about that zero volume activity a little bit so what i said is that uh, the zero volume zones, we know that they are not a tradable zones. So if you are seeing the candlestick, if you see the price, you will miss this kind of information. If you see the price alone, we see only the continuity of the price, right? So whereas if you look into the order flow, it gives you a microscopic outlook. It shows where the trade happened, where the trade haven't happened at all. Wherever the trade haven't happened, it's kind of a gap down, right? So what, if, what we can visualize from the last Friday's activity is that the price was continuously gapping down with the sellers. Sellers are pushing really hard. You can see that the sellers are presented only at few places. And see the buying side, totally buyers are absent around the open. Markets are dropping down and totally buyers are not willing to buy at the open. Only sellers are pushing it down. When only sellers are pushing it down, that is what it becomes a stacked momentum sellers that is what it becomes a potential resistance zone so one can uh, go and take some uh, uh, trades over there even if you miss that you can always take a re-entry setup at the absorption levels so there are two times the absorption happened on last friday you know in fact i can compress also if i compress i'll be able to see only the momentum zones where the momentum is coming in 
you can see the small red color stripes now those are the places i am able to see a lot of momentum sellers coming in and very few places you can see that not much of a momentum buyers some momentum buyers came over here but otherwise that entire day i am able to see more of an momentum sellers right more momentum sellers has been present throughout the day so again lot of momentum sellers stack momentum sellers coming around 155 around these levels once i expand it i'll be able to see the numbers that's how it has been designed so uh, it's out of flow in a nutshell it's more of an uh, volume based study but it explains more about how the buyers and sellers are behaving at each and every price level how the buyers and sellers are coming and collating so it's something very closely related to the auction process and right? how the auction is happening one way using order flow we can visualize that how the buyers and sellers are getting auctioning in the markets so on top of the order flow what a trader can use is that one can use it for uh, potential uh, scalping trade setups or intraday trade setups most likely if you want to know where exactly the real time resistance and real time supports are coming in so many traders they try to take the supports and resistance from the previous day or one day back or two day back so here in order flow particularly we live in the present we don't take any confirmation from the past right so we don't take any resistance level from the past we try to identify live support levels and live intraday resistance level and one can able to manage to trade such kind of levels right so we live in the present and we focus on what is happening right now we don't bother about the previous data points max to max we bother about what happened in the morning but however we don't focus much on what happened in the uh, one day back or two day back or three day back right so does it uh, make sense if you ask me why, why should i not look into the past the major reason is that if you want to know what is happening in the markets you need to focus on what is happening right now right now what is happening because we are we are traders we are intraday traders we need to bother about what is happening right now rather than focusing on what happened in the last month what happened some um, what happened in the 5 days back or what happened in 10 days back right trying to put those information and trying to reflect on those information by today that is not a most meaningful thing i would uh, i would say so right so if you are an intraday trader or a scalper you have to learn to live the right now game and you have to learn to play the right now game where the core focus goes on what is happening in the markets right now all right so that is what i've been uh, trying to do most of the time most of the time um, i prefer to do an intraday trading and uh, i there are days i have done scalping as well so whenever i am doing scalping or whenever i do intraday trading i do have a top down analysis i know what the monthly charts weekly charts daily charts are doing but my core focus will be maintained from an intraday perspective i manage to live what is happening right now because that is where you will be able to play your game objectively that is where you will be able to change your mindset objectively so that is that all in sudden if markets are turning against you you know that something is going wrong and you also learn to change all right so that is the principle one of my key principle i used to prefer to use not only in order flow i use the similar principles in uh, a market profile as well because that helped me to uh, stick to the objectivity in the market that is where i'll be able to see what i am seeing and i'll be able to trade what i am seeing so based on that i'll be able to trade right so otherwise uh, uh, you know the markets there are times the 5 minute chart will be saying buy and say 10 minute charts will be saying sell and you will be wondering what i should do right rather than and uh, focusing on such kind of uh, stuff right so it better to live in the present and try to focus what is happening in the present so your your past information maybe the monthly charts your daily charts and weekly charts might be saying asking you to sell because all the prices keep on going down but if the trend is turning up today right you should learn to trade that that current trend because you are a short term trader now the trend is up so you have to learn to trade the trend up and then sometime later if the trend is again turning down you should learn to trade the downside also 
because once you become a full time trader right so you need to you have to trade any kind of market situation whether you like it or not every day your job is to trade so you you cannot say like markets are showing high volatility i'm going to stay away from the markets you're wrong right so once you become a full time trader or if your career is going to be on the full time trading you have to learn to trade scenarios like high volatile markets like this it's crazy markets <laughs> whether you like it or not you have to be present yourself on the desk and there are days markets will be irritating not doing much but it will be grinding the traders most likely going sideways you have to learn to trade the sideways markets as well good trending days gap up days gap down days right so event days so like the event days like sometime back there was a 21 days lockdown has been announced by our prime minister and then markets started reacting on monday the very big gap down right or during the budget days there will be a wild swings over there no matter what as a if you are going to choose trading as a full time career that to a short term trading as a full time career you cannot say like i only if things are uh, uh, like in a gold deal scenario only then uh, then only i'll show up for my trades you cannot say that because uh, uh, the, every day you will be seeing some sort of an opportunity in the markets some sort of a risk in the markets on a day to day basis so you need to learn to assess the risk which is riskier which is an opportunity which is a small opportunity which is a big opportunity where the market presents bigger risk where the market presents lower risk so a trader has to assess the not only the opportunity perspective but also the risk perspective as well that is where you can build a professional full time career in the markets all right so coming back to the topic here we've been discussing about the zero volume activity so we know that that zero volume activity is nothing but an lack of trading activity lack of liquidity and the kind of an intraday gap and uh, so how to identify smart money sellers from the order flow so we've been uh, discussing about uh, let's say that uh, to give an uh, uh, rough sketch example right so i'm i'm what i'm trying to give us and i'm going to try to give an uh, sketchy example which helps you to identify tomorrow if you're watching the order flow chart straight away you can go and practice this let's say so we learned what is a stack out of, uh, stack overflow right i'm sorry it's not stack overflow it's stack out of flow bit of mix up with the programming language so let's think about an example here so think about that one of the candlestick where the buyers are showing up think about that this place the stack the buyers are showing up this entire phase too many stacked buyers showed up in this band so let me highlight this with a green color my kids used to do this all the time they used to color especially in this lockdown period right at times when i am trading i they sit next to me and then they do all these colorings so uh, think about this example let's say that the the place the green zone with whatever i marked is nothing but the smart money players are coming and buying so smart money buyers smart money buyers so when this is happening all you have to do is that you have to identify that as a zone so you you have to draw a zone over here you have to draw a zone on your candlestick charts or probably on your order flow charts and when the price started rising from that level let's say the price started going up think about that the price started keep moving up from there and when it is returning back to these levels it should act like a potential uh, support zones right so there are times what happens you will be sensing a something called absorption activity this absorption activity is the key this absorption there is a process called absorption so later on we'll discuss in detail about absorption but not in today's session so absorption if you are able to see that absorption that indicates that the smart money who were bought over here they are coming for a reentry they are coming for a reentry reentry so those are one of the good place when the price is going outside the band you can look for a long setup or when the price is trading inside the band itself you can initiate a trade if you are seeing an absorption and you can use this band as a stops you can use the band as a stops as i said low volatile markets will present a very tight stop loss something like 5 points 10 points kind of stuff 
something like last Friday, what happened is that high volatile setup. That is why the stops get extended to something like 40 points kind of stops. However, so those are <coughs> a good place for uh, <coughs> scalping. Scalping. And uh, at times, what happens when the price again comes and retest, again you are seeing an absorption pattern. One more absorption pattern. That is again an indication that smart money buyers are still they are holding their breath and still they are willing to come and uh, provide supplies at those levels. They, they come and uh, acquire those things. It's kind of a passive way. Absorption is nothing but a passive way of buying. Passive buying. Passive buying in the sense they will be uh, they will be buying in the form of limit orders. They will be reloading with their limit orders. And uh, again, you'll be able to see some more uh, buying activity happen. So they will not allow this level to break at all because that is their smart money entry level. They don't allow that levels to break at all. So that's how uh, the smart money, the, most of the institutions, they like to trade. And of course, this is more of an automation process. This is more of an automated process. Nobody is coming and controlling exactly over there. Most likely these days it is handled by the machines. So the machines, uh, when the price is coming back to the same levels, the algos will be coming and buying at exactly at those levels. Because these are mostly done by something called execution strategies these days. Execution strategies. Right? So the execution strategies are nothing but you probably you might hear about VWAP, TWAP, right? So fill or kill, fill or kill. Oops. There are many liquidity seeking uh, algorithms out there. Fill or kill. Liquidity seeking. Liquidity seeking. And uh, many uh, execution strategies are there. So one of that strategy is called some kind of an iceberg strategy. Iceberg order. Probably if you are there, in, uh, you just, can just Google how the iceberg order works. It's most likely an institutional order. So what the, the institution will be sending is most likely they'll be sending in iceberg orders all the time so that when the buyers are coming exactly to the same level, they will be hitting the iceberg order. And again, uh, price moves up. Again, when the price comes to the same level, they'll be hitting with an iceberg orders because a lot of supply will, will be there to defend them. They will not allow the price to go down below the, that particular level at all. And they will be doing it in a passive way. They don't come and buy aggressively there, but instead they will protect, they will defend. So what the smart money will be doing here is that they will defend. Defend, probably think about when, when you're thinking about defend, think about Rahul Dravid, right? So he always play a defense game, right? So they, the smart money, initially they, they place their bets aggressively. They place their bets aggressively there, but later what they'll do, later they only come and defend. They will come and defend using order types like something like an iceberg orders which you can easily visualize in the form of an order flow chart. Very interesting stuff, right? So yes, you can understand this microscopic world uh, using the order flow, not only the, where the buyers and sellers are coming in. In fact, you'll be able to understand where exactly the iceberg orders are, such kind of bigger orders are coming into the markets. There are days, a good trending days, you'll be able to identify the, the <coughs> how the, how the algos are coming and reacting in our trending days. <laughs> when the markets are clearly going up or when the markets are clearly going down, how you can understand those algorithms, how we can follow the patterns, right? So you can, you can clearly identify those patterns and you clearly you can recognize those intraday nuances and you can use it for your scalping and intraday trading strategies. So likewise, there are uh, such kind of patterns. Uh, probably I had identified a couple of patterns over here. One is the momentum reversal patterns. So what we see in this today is a stack the imbalance strategy. Kind of a uh, stack the imbalance is what we used to call uh, the, the example which I showed you is nothing but the stack the imbalance or stack the momentum, so whichever the way we can call. The first example which is there on the left side, it shows the stack the buyers, and the one which is there on the right hand side, which shows the stack the sellers. So likewise, the order flow, uh, we can build such kind of uh, strategy. So I had closely uh, identified the 12 trading strategies. One is a momentum reversal, stack the imbalance strategy, R delta, COT failed breakout strategy. We can also say whether the breakout which is happening in the market, it's a strong breakout or a weaker breakout using the 
commitment of trades setup so i've been talking about the commitment of trades right so there been a uh, commitment of trades on upside as well as on the downside so using this information we can say so this is cot buyers cot buyers commitment of trades buyers and commitment of trade sellers cot sellers so using this we can uh, able to say whether a breakout is a successful breakout or not a successful breakout if it's a breakout failure then how i should focus on the trade setup if it is a successful breakout then how i have to manage my trades where i have to keep my stop loss now all these things can be objectively learned using order flow kind of a platform and uh, of course you can identify stop hunting and when a stop hunting is going to happen how the market is preparing before the stop hunting everything you can visualize from the order flow charts as i said a successful breakout or a failed breakout strategy or a swing breakout strategy or something like a range breakout when the price is trading in a range and the price is breaking out how you should handle it whether this range breakout can be successful or not right <coughs> and at times trapped when the where the buyers are getting trapped where the sellers are getting trapped which we can clearly visualize from the out of flow kind of charts right so uh, in trades la 3.0 what we are going to cover here is it's a kind of a promo i would like to talk about it so it's an uh, trades la 3.0 is our upcoming mentorship program where we are going to talk about uh, market profile order flow and volume profile kind of studies it's a institutional grade mentorship program where we'll be able to learn where the institutions are entering where the smart money is entering not only the smart money we'll also learning where the dumb money is coming in right so primarily we'll be using three studies over here market profile order flow and volume profile and of course uh, most likely the, the primary goal is to today like we how we focused where the smart money is coming in right the same way you can also identify not only where the smart money is coming in you can also identify where the dumb money is coming in and if it is dumb money why and where these people are placing their stocks that is one of our core focus there i've been uh, doing this for quite some time now and uh, where exactly the short covering is happening where a big drop can happen and why it happened right the why is the focus most likely i'm going to focus on there and primarily i'm going to use two two major tools one is ami broker and another one is ninja trader right so these are the two learning platforms we are going to use in tradezilla 3.0 closely it is a 85 plus hours of mentorship online program right so you can you can see the entire uh, uh, agenda in webinars.com right so you can you can go to webinars.com i guess you guys are a bit familiar about webinars right so webinars is an uh, online trading community where you will be able to uh, get access to the financial webinars uh, we have been continuously doing uh, a mentorship program as well as lot many free community webinars as well so here you'll be able to find out the trades la 3.0 so where you'll be able to understand the complete uh, agenda right so the uh, it's a the mentorship program is starting from 18th april and will be running for a continuous 30 trading uh, Uh, 30 days of session most likely weekends we'll be having uh, weekend webinars and uh, we also have a 20 plus days of live training session every day we'll be having two hours of session one hour in the morning and one hour in the afternoon right so uh, we will be covering extensively everything right from the scratch right from market profile to order flow right so uh, strategies uh, involved in order flow scalping trading strategies Right, using order flow and intraday trading techniques using order flow and market profile so close to close we'll be covering a lot many data points over here and you can get the complete schedule uh, uh, from this uh, particular link all right so coming back to the topic so last friday right, last friday there are very interesting opportunities that has been presented not only from market profile perspective but also from the order flow perspective as well let me show you from the market profile perspective Now, how many of you use market profile you can just type it out if you are using market profile you can say like you know, you can put your trading experience over there all right very few people are using market profile so the chart what you are watching is a market profile chart again market profile is one of the uh, very interesting uh, tool right so what i was commented right last friday is that i've been looking into the auction last friday 
last Friday, it helps again, it, it helps us to take an intraday view or even a positional view one can do with market profile. Right. So last Friday, I've been seeing the activity. So this activity is nothing but an, uh, it's a kind of a visualization of a 30 minute bar. It's a very simple visualization, but it helps us to identify a lot many nuances. So when the price was going down, so I have to take a long view in the markets. Let me explain why I had taken a long view and then why I had converted my long view into short view. So I've been observing a lot many things on that day. So one is the market profile and another one is the auto flow charts. Auto flow charts are running in one of my another monitor which is next to me. So here, that particular day, price was coming down. So you can see that maybe for a simplicity purpose, what I'm trying to do here is I'm going to go to the indicators. Maybe better not. Right? So I prefer not to increase the TPO size. Let me use a standard regular size. So the size which I'm using is on each and every block is one point TPO, right? You, you can see the letters over here. So each and every letter is a half an hour activity. So that means letter A comes from, uh, letter A was going down, letter B also going down, letter C also going down and letter D also going down. By that time, I seen something interesting out there. So what I seen interesting, I'm gonna share it over here. When the price was going down, Right. So one of the letter, you see the letter, letter A, B, and C and D. So letter A is from 9.15 to 9.45. And letter B is from 9.45 to 10.15. And letter C is from 10.15 to 10.45. And the letter D is from 10.45 to 11.15 and so on. So every day we'll be getting letter A to letter M. All right. So here, when the price was going down, if you could see that letter A was going down and letter B also going down, letter A is like a, the, that gray color uh, letter. If I compress that, it will become uh, bars, blocks of bricks. So the gray one, so the gray color one is the letter A and uh, the orange color one is letter B and this red color one is the letter C. I was finding something very interesting at letter C. You can see that price was dropping down when the price was dropping down, it, uh, the price went to the high of the C. You can see that the C, the C over here, the C period high is precisely over here, which is exactly, if I try to draw a line, if I try to draw a line at exactly at the C period high, I was finding something interesting. What is so interesting about it? Can anybody know that? What is so interesting about it? It's basically nothing but the C period high was exactly or just one TPO away from the away from the previous day low. So here is the previous day low. This is my previous day low. This is my this J period low on 1st of April. That is my exactly the previous day low. So when the price was dropping down, right, the letter C was stopped exactly at the previous day low and it started dropping down. And letter D also went down. So that is what I said, like probably it's a good place to look for a long opportunity because I am seeing that these traders are not strong traders. They're they are mostly dumb traders. They're most likely dumb traders, dumb traders. So how do I know that they are dumb traders? Because many traders, they watch the previous day high and previous day low, especially the traders. They are the one who watches where the previous day low is all about previous day low and exactly they try to push the price exactly from the previous day low that references are mostly done by the trading community right so the traders are the one who does that not the serious money not the serious investors as are not the serious institutions they don't do this kind of stuff right so when the price started going down so price was going down and my comment right so my, i had mentioned my comment over there so let me tell you uh, when I had uh, gone for the long view, right? When I was seeing this opportunity, so we used to have a, a community portal called uh, Slack. So Slack is a private trading community, our own private trading community, where we discuss uh, market profile and autoflow kind of stuff. So I've been uh, explaining it to my students as well. So we've been uh, monitoring this in the morning as well as in the afternoon. So. I think last Friday, the comment was around like, 
so the, we are having a one of the channel is uh, related to market profile and order flow so in that we've been discussing about that particular day's activity so i had uh, spotted this information i said uh, that c period high is exactly matching with the j period low that is today's c period high the c period high runs from 10:15 to 10:45 is exactly matching with the previous day low which is very difficult to recognize from a candlestick chart which you can easily uh, market profile kind of chart is is good to visualize the highs and lows basically right it's one of the good tool to visualize highs and lows and where the markets are trending where the markets are going sideways it provides a very good uh, idea about what the traders are doing and what kind of traders they are so my comment is that right so c period high is so visual so my comment is that 8180 test is possible so 8180 uh, test is possible buy and dips in nifty and there are b and d also there are a lot other lot many weaker references are there so totally i am seeing that particular day i had seen lot many intraday sellers so a lot of intraday pullback is there right so uh, this comment i had posted around 11:15 and uh, probably around 1:37 i was doing an uh, option hydra session where i was explaining this activity and why the price has to rise i was i, I was trying to explain by the time price also shot up and then uh, it got cleared right so uh, uh, people also asked uh, can i go long right? that was my uh, it actually went to 8196 should i have to book profits or trailing stop loss my comment was that maybe it's not an uh, Uh, positionally nifty is having a bearish setup right so nifty bottom is not done yet so that's an intraday trade so you have to get out of the position so it's the opportunity is there but the whatever the opportunity which is presented on the last friday is just a small opportunity it's a lot small long opportunities but still nifty has been positionally having a bearish setup so whenever the positionally nifty is having a bearish setup right most of the times it's good to sell the rise every rise it's good to sell especially when the short term trend is down so last time we spoken about the importance of the short term trend how you, why you should focus on the short term trend why you should focus on the high confidence markets so last friday we had a high confidence markets and of course it's there in the youtube as well you can go to the webinar channel or market calls channel you can understand what we had spoken in the last week session right well, last week we explained about the importance of the short term uh, trend short term trend is down of course and so i thought like positionally still is having a bearish setup so price should reverse from here there are more odds that price can revert down from there so and then I, in the in the market profile section what i was seeing there is that market profile uh, i'm able to see that that kind of spike like i was seeing an uh, sharp spike so when the spike was coming in this is what it scares most of the traders what it does is that it makes most of the traders to take an opposite direction most of the time it's kind of a misdirection we can say like it's kind of a misdirection because the price action is faster the price action is faster most of the faster price action not every price price action remember that most of the such kind of intraday fast price actions are most likely misleading it misleads most of the traders if you remember right so price at the open it was falling faster later on the market was doing like kind of a sideways dull boring it is like whether the market will break or not that is a kind of uh, moment we had most of the time i, I think by that time uh, almost 2 o'clock has been passed and around uh, 135 or 137 we got that sharp shoot coming in that sharp shoot most likely if you compare with the order flow order flow will be saying that that is the resistance level right that price is again hitting the resistance level again coming out of that resistance level and that is a perfect place to look for one more intraday short in fact right in fact one of the perfect place to not only to look for an uh, intraday short in fact it is a one of the good place to look for an positional shorts also so there exactly the price was like uh, faster it went up so faster it went up and followed by faster it went down faster it went down as well so those are very crucial information that is a critical information most of the bear markets have this kind of behavior if you observe closely mostly on the downtrends i'm talking about mostly on the downtrend these kind of behaviors are very much common and that is what as a trader you need to understand see many trader 
they focus more on the indicator. And some people, they focus on the price, but they don't focus on how fast the price is moving, how slow the price is moving. That is where most of the trap is done. So a faster price up followed by a faster price down is that it traps most of the emotional buyers. Emotional buyers will be thinking that, oh my God, the market is moving faster. So I think this market is going to break the day high or it can even go up higher. Maybe I'm not sure how many of you watched the markets during real time last Friday. Last Friday, when, you, when, the, when the moment the people started seeing this, right? even the people who are having a position, right, they will tend to stay. They want to know what is going to happen further. Will the market is going to extend further or not? That will emotionally make them to sit on to the trade. But if you are, if you know the principles of market profile or out of flow, at least you can, you can have an idea that this opportunity is a very small opportunity. So let it go. Even if I am missing a very one good buying opportunity, let me miss it. Let me take whatever is there on the table. Let me book my profits there and let me take it because I have. I'm just seeing only a small opportunity as per the market profile. And order flow is showing that it is a resistance, right? So most of the times the market profile and order flow goes hands in hand. Even if you are from the price action background, price action and order flow, yes, you can mix it. Or if you are using Iliad Wave and order flow, one of the best tools to mix it. But it's more of a personalized study. You have to go back and experiment on your own. My experiment is mostly on market profile and order flow. But I've been doing this for quite some time now. So as a trader, right? So you need to have a specific skill set how to observe the markets, what to observe, and how we can understand what is happening inside the markets, what the traders and what the buyers and sellers are trying to do in that market. So I would say that this shoot, the sharp shoot, right? This kind of shoot is happening over here, but however, you can see that more and more crowded activity is happening at these locations. So this is how mostly the uh, dealers will be trying to do in the markets. The dealers, we call them as dealers. The dealers are mostly short-term traders, short-term traders. Most likely they are wholesale dealers, kind of a wholesale. They're not retail, they're wholesale dealers, but still they are traders. They're not investors, they are traders. They also do accumulation, they also do distribution in the markets, but they always like to behave like a wholesale dealer, wholesale vendors. So wholesale vendor, vendors, they do what? They pile up the inventory and they dump the inventory to the retail. They sell it to the retails. So that's what they are doing. So they, that particular day I was able to see the uh, dealer's behavior. And uh, most likely it's kind of a clustered uh, uh, trading activity where you can easily identify that dealers are present in the market. And uh, continuously they've been uh, uh, selling in the markets. So that's what we were able to see that because that particular day price went down and clustered selling happened on that day. So that means it's a critical input that the dealers went short. Most likely the retails might be trading on the other side. They, they love to trade with the uh, retail traders, right? So that misdirection is the place. This misdirection, the misdirection with the fast price action upside, fast price action. So they, when, you, when somebody is seeing that fast price action, that will attract more and more, whom it attracts? It attracts more and more retail traders. Right, so because most of the traders they like to trade the price, or they, they like to trade price-based indicators. There are many price-based traders are there. Even the price action traders are nothing but what they trade only the price. They see the price and they trade the price. And of course, they do have their own rules, but I'm not blaming anyone. But most of the traders, especially the emotional traders, I'm talking about the emotional traders. They see the price, they get emotional, and that is where they get into wrong trade most of the times. All right, so my point here is that if you're watching the price, try to watch it even more closer. Try to understand where you're getting more emotional, where you're not getting more emotional. Record those points. Record those points and try to understand how price is behaving at those locations. And if you're going to do this on a continual basis, you'll be able to figure out where the trap is. Nobody else have to taught you, right? So... Yes, I can share you my own experience to a certain extent, but it's a lot of self observations at a minute scale. You have to learn to observe. That is where the continuous sustainable development one can achieve in the trading field. It's only high, it's one of the highly competitive fields. I can say that 
and to attain edge all you have to do is that you have to learn to see the markets at a microscopic levels that's it right so coming back to the topic here and in order flow analytics so we will be trying to cover most likely the core principles what uh, we can what we are going to do with the uh, order flow and uh, where we, the momentum orders are coming in where the momentum exhaustion is happening where the stop hunting is happening where the big orders are coming in what is the importance of those big orders especially where institutional algos are running we will be going to focus at at those algo levels as well this time uh, it will be even more intensive order flow analytics i can say that uh, 70% of the content in the mentorship program i am going to teach most likely on market profile and uh, remaining 30% of the content will be from primarily from the order flow analytics and uh, some of the introduction i am going to give you this time a brief introduction to my market microstructure which is one another way to understand how the order book works or how the transaction how the trade actually happens inside the market right so how the order book engine actually uh, happens why how why the zero liquidity zones are happening where the low liquidity zones are where the high liquidity zones are how we can identify using order flow so that is what we are going to cover and uh, yes so these are the list of order flow trading strategies i am going to cover close to close some 16 to 18 trading strategies i am going to cover some of them are trend following strategies and some of them are mean reversion strategies all right so hope to see you soon in the tradezilla 3.0 section and uh, i am going to cover a lot of uh, foundational principles which are mandatorily for the order flow right from the market depth right from the tick level data how the order flow is getting built what is liquidity what is volume what is the uh, how to trade in a high volatile markets how to trade in a low volatile markets right so what are the volume profile principles how to use the volume flow how to understand that how the volume flow is for that day uh, how to understand where the stop hunting can happen and how we can identify using order flow where the momentum is happening where the momentum exhaustion is happening of course where the absorption is happening especially when there is a smart money behavior you need to know where the absorption is happening in the markets and where the initiative drive is happening where strong traders are coming and pushing the markets where they are driving the markets where it is happening right and whether the breakout is successful or not so lot many interesting concepts we are going to discuss in trades la 3.0 and um, i guess i would like to take a couple of questions from here so there is a question in the q and a box is there you can always go and ask your questions in the q and a section avoid asking in the chat section because it's very difficult to find uh, answers because continuously the chat is running on so where i can get market profile charts very valid question you can find there are a lot many providers out there right so you can uh, try out with belltpo.com so you can find you can go to belltpo.com there is one more question from uh, vijay his question is is this session is getting recorded of course the session is getting recorded everyone will be getting access to the recorded session once the once this uh, session is over uh, it will be posted in the webinar's youtube channel as well as in the market calls youtube channel so you will be getting access to those uh, Uh, session right so here you can uh, get access to market profile order flow charts you can try out the free trial out there belltpo.com especially i prefer to use it on a ninja trader 8 platform i've been a quite a long user of uh, ninja trader 8 and belltpo for, for quite some time now so there is one more question from ashwani why in volume indicator red and green bars are showing what do you infer from this is it a net buyer or a net seller so the volume indicator right to so the volume indicator probably i think you are talking about market profile i mean the, the you are talking about the ami broker charts so the volumes are showing red and green color bars the green color bars are nothing but the positive bars so positive so price also went up so it's showing volumes as positive whereas it's a negative bars and the volumes are shown in red color nothing much that doesn't means like it's a buying volume or that doesn't mean like sellers volume because buyers and sellers are present at each and every price level if you see the order flow charts you can visualize how the buyers and sellers are coming at each and every price level where buyers are more where buyers are less all these information you will be able to collect by looking into the 
order flow charts, which is, which is, I would say that kind of a microscopic, take, you take a microscope and you look into the candlestick and you will be able to get a clarity. Like you see, you can use a microscope to study the bacteria and virus, right? Same way, like uh, you can use the order flow to study what the buyers and sellers are doing at each and every price level, particularly about market orders. So is this chart available at Upstocks? I guess none of these brokers are providing uh, order flow charts. Most likely you can find uh, on tools like MultiCharts, NinjaTrader, Market Delta, those kind of softwares you'll be able to find it uh, because this is computationally intensive. So it, it does a lot of calculations in the background. And uh, as of now, to my knowledge, Indian brokers are not providing at this point of time. Yesterday at 140, big green candle in uh, Nifty futures, one lakh buyer at 8170. Of course, that's the one lakh buyer over here. Here you can find uh, that that is a question from Leela, right? So this is one lakh buyer. Instead of one lakh, I had what I had done is that I had multiplied, I had divided by the lot size. Whatever you are seeing is the lot size. So 1369. So instead of three, 1369, you have to multiply by 75. So you'll be able to get that one lakh numbers over here roughly right i guess that answers your question right so the question is that this kind of big buying activity and big selling activity happens all the time so big buying is good but there is no continuation at all instead what i'm seeing is that the smart money is building a resistance so that is why even with this kind of big buying activity the smart money is able to defend the price Right, so big big money bought definitely some big money bought at these levels. After that, what? If the big money bought, right? If the, even if the big money is there, they they have to come and buy. They have to come and buy the markets again. They are not doing that. Once the big money is bought, then the question comes: What is next? Is the big money is there or not? The big money is there. Definitely, they will be coming and buying again. If they are not. Just like that, they will be leaving the system, right? So they they bought. We don't know because these traders not necessarily they have to be smart money. They these big quantity of buyers not necessarily they have to be smart money. They might be buying for maybe for uh, five days or ten days or fifteen days. We don't know their holding period. But however, the smart money we had shown that is a smart money from the intraday perspective. It's a pure intraday game which they played over there. And Suresh is asking about what is COT. COT means commitment of traders. COT means commitment of trades. So it's slightly different from the commitment of trade, which is released by the US, um, US exchanges. US exchanges often release commitment of trade. That is different. This commitment of trade is built on top of something called Delta. Right? So on top of Delta, it's a formula based upon delta on top of that buyer's commitment of traders uh, commitment of traders and seller's commitment and buyer's commitment has been plotted so let me move on to the next question the next question is from uh, which number can i use in crude probably i think you are talking about the order flow uh, i mean uh, tpo size so basically you can use tpo as one point tpo every one point you can use it for crude should not be a big thing. Say something about RBL Bank. Uh, I mean, uh, definitely, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, today we are not going to discuss about any of these stocks. Uh, my, my core focus is on uh, the uh, trading instruments and index futures. So if, if you ask me to talk about anything about index futures, I can talk, right? So I'm not going to talk any uh, stocks in today's session. Usually I hate giving views on stocks. So don't ask me about uh, stock views or investment advices. I'm not that kind of uh, a guy. And uh, will I get recording of today's video? I was late. That is a question from Pew. Of course, it will be uploaded to the YouTube. Anand Murthy, very impressive for intraday traders. Definitely auto flow and market profile is one of the tool, especially if you are thinking of building a trading career, a full-time trading career, for a professional trading career in this market, I would definitely recommend market profile and order flow kind of tools to trade in any kind of markets. So again, Suresh is asking the same question, what is commitment of trader and how it is different from Delta? So Delta is nothing but the total number of buyers minus total number of sellers. 
whereas COD is nothing but it, it's a uh, formula which is derived from the delta. So maybe it, it's very difficult to explain now because if, if I started explaining now, I need another half an hour to explain what is commitment of trades, right? And how to take a trade based upon COD levels. So Triveni, there is a question from Triveni. What is your suggestion on heavy market orders? For example, single order of one lakh plus quantities in Nifty futures. So those kind of uh, big quantities in the market, right? It's a very valid question. I definitely appreciate that. Those kind of bigger quantities, they come in the markets at a very frequent intervals. In fact, I can, I can also put a filter over here. Let's say if I go if I right click and I'll go to the indicators, that is a way I can filter some big trades. So let's say show me the trades that are where 500 plus lots got punched in one shot in one shot punch wherever 500 lots got punched just show me filter and show me only those levels so at times you'll be able to figure out a pattern right so there are times where multiple 500 orders of buyers will be coming over there so you might be able to see such kind of patterns in the markets so which usually indicates that strong money presence is there on that particular day so you can see that there are very few places few traders are able to punch 522 lots in one single shot. So most likely they could be some uh, big orders. They might be using some execution strategies because our trading terminal, we have a uh, lot freeze quantity, right? The freeze quantity is there. Whereas there are places, if you're going to use execution algos, you can be able to punch 522 lots in one shot. And uh, there are other places, again, one big sell order has been happened around 558 levels. And uh, so it just filters and shows only where the big quantity, which is mentioned by my threshold levels. Again, you can see here one shot that is 1,369 lots got traded only in that one block. That is 1,369 into 75. How much it is? 1,369. So 1,369 into 75. Right? So almost 1 lakh. 26,075 shares got transacted at particularly at those levels. So these kind of things uh, definitely cannot be done by small traders, right? So most likely some bigger uh, traders or some, some HNI traders or some institutional traders are involved over there. However, if you ask me, these kind of bigger quantities happens in the markets very randomly because there are a lot, lot many times iceberg orders will be running in and uh, uh, various algos might be running in uh, such kind of execution algos are present in the markets at times throughout the day. So you will be experiencing such kind of bigger orders hitting the markets time to time at random places. But there are days, there are trending days, you will be able to see a continuous flow of such kind of orders. So yes, those are the days you'll be able to figure out that some strong money is present in the market. So this kind of days, it's coming at a very random places, nothing much of an importance over there. But these kind of uh, bigger orders, at what location it is happening, that is really important. I'm not saying that you should ignore bigger orders. I'm not saying that. What, at what location it is happening, that really matters for a traders. All right. So let me move on to the next question. Is there any tips based services based on today's strategy concept, even free or paid? So I don't run advisory. So most of my um, most of my teachings are only, I mean, most of the uh, my business is I keep limited to the education side. I don't entertain people on the advisory side, right? And this, I've been doing this for quite some time now and I don't do advisory for your information. Can I use similar analysis in Heikenashi candle? Again, yes, a valid question. You can use it in a Heikenashi candle as well. Not only in the Heikenashi candle, even I can, you can use it. You can go to the data series and you can use this setup probably on uh, any kind of setup. Maybe you can run it on uh, even something like, let's say point and figure, you can run it or probably you can run it on something like a Renko bars. So Renko, something like, let's say, let me put some 200 bar Renko, let's see. Even you can run it on a Renko bars, you can run it on a range bars. So any kind of bar setups, you, you can be able to run these kind of setups. Of course, there's a small settings, I have to do that. I have to remove the filters. 
But yes, you can you can run it on any setups. I guess the calculation is going to take a little bit of longer time because it's computationally uh, intensive. So let me remove the filter so that I should be able to see the Renko charge as well. On top of Renko charge, you can apply it. You can apply on Heikenashi charge. You can apply to the option data. Right? As long as the buyers and sellers are there, you can apply to Nifty Futures, you apply to Gold, Crude, US JNR, US Markets, or any kind of markets you can <coughs> you can apply. Even for option call and put option also, you can apply the order flow charts. So not a big deal. So this is what you're watching is a Renko charts. Even on top of Renko charts also, you'll be able to see the total buyers and sellers set up at each and every price levels. All right, and I prefer to use something called range bar charts, something like 200 R, which is every 10 points you'll be able to see, and uh, um, uh, kind of something called range bar charts, which uses tick charts in the background to plot it. And primarily, we have some of the automated trading signals as well on top of this sort of flow. Something called R delta um, is what uh, we have some R1 proprietary trading signals as well. All right, so this is a range bar charts. Of course, you guys know about range bar charts. If not, just go back and uh, study about what is a range bar charts. Primarily, it's a timeless chart used to minimize the noise in the charts. And you can use order flow on top of the range bar charts or volume bar charts or equi volume bar charts. So any kind of bar setup, you can use order flow. There is no restriction at all there. All right, so I guess there are still 117 questions are there. It's very difficult to focus on all the questions, but let me get some selected questions. Is this available on uh, TradingView? That is a question from anonymous attendee, right? So uh, let me say that uh, TradingView at this point of time, they're not supporting order flow. They are supporting something called volume profile. They're not even supporting market profile. So TradingView at this point of time, is still not mature to handle uh, market profile and order flow kind of charts. And there's one more question from Sendamari Kandan. Order flow is only for scalping. Yes, primarily most of the traders, they use order flow for scalping and intraday trading. Positional trading, I haven't done that, but most of my experience is on scalping and intraday trading. Most of my strategies, whatever I have built, is mostly uh, from the scalping and intraday perspective. And uh, what is the difference between AMI broker and Ninja Trader? This is a question from Hiren Lakani, right? So AMI broker is one of the fantastic tool. I've been a, a user of my AMI broker since 2009 onwards, right? So since I'm a core user of AMI broker, I have built most of my indicators, most of my algorithmic trading strategies on top of AMI broker. So I cannot get rid of myself uh, with AMI broker. I'm a very big fan of AMI broker. And off late, I become a fan of Ninja Trader as well. So since 2014 onwards, I've been using uh, Ninja Trader for uh, only two reasons: only for market profile and order flow. Otherwise, most of my studies are already there with uh, Ami Broker. Most of my automated trading studies are indicators, are strategies, whatever I'm building, I use to build with Ami Broker. But yes, um, because of market profile and order flow, I used to uh, stick with uh, Ninja Trader. And the prime, initially I used Ninja Trader 7 and later on I moved to Ninja Trader 8 because Ninja Trader 8 is more sophisticated compared to Ninja Trader 7, right? So it has more, uh, I would say that international class trading tool compared to NT7, NT8 is much, much superior. NT8 means Ninja Trader 8. So there is a question from Linsit. So COT is 3X all same in the instrument I mean, anyways, we're not going to talk about the COD levels in today's session. All right, so again, I'm seeing a repeated question. What's the difference between AMI Broker and Ninja Trader? Can we place orders from this software? No, all these softwares are, uh, uh, the, especially the Ninja Trader software is most likely an analysis terminal. So you cannot place orders from this. Uh, unless you have some Ninja Trader license, that too with selected brokers. I think only interactive brokers are supported at this point of time. All right, I guess uh, let me stop the session here. I guess a lot of questions here. Maybe I'll try to explain uh, over the mail, right? So it's pretty difficult to explain each and every questions here. And so far I'm seeing still 123 questions are still pending, which is very difficult to explain. 
um, uh, and we have a very limited time and uh, many people have to go back to their sleep and they have to continue with their daily routines. Of course, we are in a lockdown. We can continue, the, we can keep on going on, uh, we can going on uh, talking on the show, but it's better to have a break. We'll come back and uh, probably next week, we'll try to catch up with some other interesting topic. Thank you.